We're going to be looking at displacement to time graphs now, guys, and this is an example of a displacement to time graph. So displacement is more like a positioning um, position where we call it x, and you can see this x-axis, we call it, call it, we're not going to call it t x anymore, we're going to call it t. So that's the x-axis, this is the t-axis. So if you have a look on this one, uh, we can see that firstly it's asking us the initial displacement. Now the word initial is when time is zero, when t is zero. So you know that this axis is the time. When t is zero, when time is zero is here. So displacement is simply that point there where it starts when x is zero as well. So x is zero, that's the initial displacement. Now next it's asking for the displacement at t equals to four, at time four. Now four is right there. The, uh, the displacement is right there where it's actually equal to the displacement. You can have a look at the arrow where it points to. It's probably around x equals to 3. So that's what the displacement is when time is 4. So you can follow the graph like that. Now, it's asking for this time the velocity during time equals to 0 to 3. So between 0 and 3. Now, velocity is more like a speed. When we calculate speed, guys, we want to calculate the gradient. So the rate pretty much. So velocity is like a rate. So I want to look at gradient because gradient determines the rate. So I'm going to have a look at our rise over run. Now 0 to 3, the rise, see that's 3 isn't it? The rise goes up this much and runs this much isn't it? So rising is 3, running is also 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. So 1 meters per second, see how I'm writing it like a rate? That's what the velocity is. So that's what it is here. Now in the next one, they want the velocity from 3 to 7, when t equals to 3 to where it's 7. Now you can see it's a flat line, so there's no rise, it's only the run. Rise is 0, and the run is 3, so it'll be, sorry, 4. So 0 over 4, you can see that they, these are 4 points. So 0 over 4, so 0 divided by anything will just give us 0. So this one here is 0 meters per second, which means we're not moving, it's just a no speed, no rate at all. Now, guys, this is find the velocity between 7 and t, sorry, when t is between 7 and 10. So this is 7, this is 10. This time it's going this way, so we want to find the, distance, uh, sorry, the gradient again to find the rate, which is, in, which is ultimately the velocity. So rise over run, we're going to do that. See, run, sorry, rise, we're going down this time, isn't it? So this much going down and this much going run. So therefore it's negative 3 over 3 because it's going down by 3 so it's negative 3 and then it's going to the right by 3 so it's positive 3. So negative 3 over 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 meters per second would be the velocity here. Now the negative velocity implies that it's going backwards so make sure you know that positive velocity means we're going forward, negative velocity means we're going backwards. Just keep that in mind guys. Alright and this part F it's asking us to now find the distance travelled between when the time is between 0 and 10. So all this time, from 0 to 10, what is the total distance travelled? So first of all, from 0 to 3, when time is from 0 to 3, this is what's happening. Now guys, remember here, don't get confused, that this is not the distance that we're finding. That's, the length of that is not what we're finding. From 0 to 3, We've travelled up to here, which means we have to look at what the vertical distance is, not that distance here. So a lot of people get mixed up there. So that much, it's up to there. If we link it, that distance there is 3, isn't it? So I've put 3 there for this part where it's 0 to 3. Now when t is between here, these distances, uh, 3 to 7 I guess, see how it's flat? Which means the distance from these times stay at here. So we're not moving any further. And remember how the velocity, because it's flat, is zero, which means we're not moving at all. So between these two times, we haven't moved anything, so therefore it's zero. No distance travelled between those times. Now, this part of where we go backwards, let's see how far we've travelled backwards. We were at three, yeah? But now, if you have a look at that one, it's we're down back to zero, where displacement is zero. So when we've travelled from 3 to 0, we've pretty much travelled 3, okay? Three, um, the distance there travelled is 3. Again, we're always looking at the vertical distance. So 3 plus 0 plus 3 is simply 6. So that's the distance that we've travelled. You can just write 6 units because we don't really know what the units is. But that's pretty much what it is. Alright guys? So, let's try question 2. There's another type of graph, some nice zigzaggy graph. Uh, we want to first find the times when the uh, particle changes its direction. Which means, um, see how this part is going forward 
and from this part on when it's going backwards so that tip there is when it go when it changes its direction from going forward to going backwards and the same thing is, sorry that one here we can find the time there which is three t equals to three I don't know if it's seconds but um, just three and then you can know that this one here as I've said that's also when it goes backwards but suddenly changes to going forward again so that's the time when it changes direction which is this case is t equals to six so t equals to three and six is where it changes direction Okay, let's do uh, B. It says find the distance travelled for the first 10 seconds. So I guess this is all in seconds. From 0 to 10, I want to find the distance. So for this first part, again, we're always looking at the vertical distance. So we've travelled from 0 up to there. And that's approximately 3 as well, isn't it? So I'm going to make it 3. Now this part. See how this one is 3 and this one is negative 3. So from 3 it's travelled backwards all the way to negative 3, which means the total distance between 3 and negative 3 is 6. That's what I've done there. And the final part here, it's travelled from that's negative 3 and it's gone back to where 0 is. So the distance between 0 and negative 3 is 3. So we're always making sure that everything is positive because it's the distance travelled. So that's the answer, 3 plus 6 plus 3, which just becomes 12. That's how much distance we've travelled in that first 10 seconds. Now, we're going to look for the velocity from 0 to 3 seconds, so this part here. So the velocity again is the rate, or when we want to find the rate, we want to look at the rise over run, the gradient, isn't it? So you can see that the rise is going up by that much, and the run is going um, across by that much, which is like 3 over 3, 3 up and 3 across. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so 1 metres per second is the velocity for this part here, just for that time there. Now in the next question they ask for 3 to 6, which is this part here. So 3 to 6, again we want to find the gradient, which is rise over run. Again you can see the rise, this time is going down there. See how it's going back, so going from a high point to a low point. So we're going down by that much, remember how that one was 6, and it's going running across this much, I think that's 3. So it's 6 divided by 3, sorry, negative 6 divided by 3 because it's going down. So that's going to be negative 2 metres per second. So that's what I put there. And it makes sense because it's going backwards. So that's why the velocity is negative. Now finally we want to find the velocity between the last time, it's 6 to 10, from here to here, that point, that um, part there. Again, let's do rise over run. The rise, we're going up this time, isn't it? I think it's going up by 3 and across by 4. So it's going to be 3 over 4. Rise over run, 3 over 4. And I'll just write it as a decimal, guys, 0 0.75 metres per second. And that's what I'm going to put here. Um, it makes sense again because it's positive now. We're going in a forward direction. So if you have a look at this question, it's asking for the maximum speed. Now the maximum speed is when it goes the fastest. Now this one is positive, this one's negative, this one's positive. And the only reason for this to be negative, as I keep telling you, is because it's going backwards. So although it's going backwards, numerically, then if you just ignore the signs in front, which number has the greatest numerical value? It must be this one here. That's the one with the biggest value. See, excluding the negative, 2 is greatest out of all these speeds, isn't it? So therefore, we can say 2 meters per second is the maximum speed. Remember, guys, when they ask you for speed, it must be positive. So see how I didn't write negative 2? I wrote positive 2 meters per second.